When the time had come for the Founding Fathers to write the Constitution and devise a new system of government for the American Republic, they remembered the lessons learned during the Revolution and the abuse of King George III. The colonists. They wanted their new government to have limited power to prevent it from abusing the rights of citizens. But they also wanted a strong government that could deal with unanticipated problems and meet the needs of their people. To accomplish this goal, the Founding Fathers put in the Constitution a system of checks and balances. Based on Montesquieu's philosophy of separation of powers, the Founding Fathers separated the government into three separate branches. Each branch had separate powers of government. This would prevent one branch of government from dominating the others and thus abusing the rights of the citizens. In essence, if one branch abused their power and tried to limit the rights of citizens, the other branches could check that branch and deny its ability to overstep its bounds by the Constitution. Not in my house. <laughs> the Founding Fathers believed that a balance of power between the three branches of government would best serve the people of the United States and help prevent an abuse of power like they saw with King George III. The three branches of government are separated, and each branch has defined enumerated powers. Enumerated powers are powers that are directly listed in the Constitution. So let's take a look at some of these enumerated powers. The first enumerated power of the legislative branch is the power to make laws. Congress also has the power to enact and collect taxes. The legislative branch also has the power to raise an army and a navy. The legislative branch also has the power to regulate business. And finally, the legislative branch has the power to declare war. Under the Constitution, the executive branch has the enumerated powers to administer the laws of the land, to appoint new judges and other government officials, to act as commander-in-chief of the military, to veto or deny acts of Congress from becoming law, and to issue pardons to prisoners and declare executive orders. And lastly, we have the judicial branch of the United States government. The judicial branch is made up of the Supreme Court, which has nine sitting members. The judicial branch's job is to judge the legality of laws, meaning it doesn't restrict the rights of the people guaranteed by the Constitution. The concepts of checks and balances is used regularly by the U.S. government. One example comes following World War I. Woodrow Wilson traveled to Versailles, France in order to negotiate a peace for World War I. In his design for peace, called the 14 Points, Woodrow Wilson included the League of Nations. Once peace was negotiated at Versailles, the treaty was brought home and needed approval from Congress. With a war-weary public at home, Congress felt that the League of Nations may draw the United States into another war, which led them to the decision to not approve the treaty. Checks and balances can also be seen in the events surrounding the attack on Pearl Harbor and the U.S. entry into World War II. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese Empire bombed the Pacific Fleet at the naval base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Thousands of Americans were killed, and the U.S. Pacific Fleet was crippled. Yet even with this blatant act of war, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt could not declare war on the Japanese Empire. Instead, he personally addressed a joint session of Congress and had to ask the Congress to consider a declaration of war against Japan. I ask that the Congress declare a state of war between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Because of checks and balances, no one branch of government can dominate. The President and Congress cannot pass unconstitutional laws because they'll be struck down by the Supreme Court. The President has the power to strike down laws passed by Congress, and the Congress has the ability to deny Supreme Court justices and government officials that the President appoints if they feel that they are unqualified. The principle of checks and balances can be seen throughout U.S. history, and we will examine them throughout this course.